Hey everybody, I want to talk about something that's uh, probably going to uh, be off-putting whenever you first hear it, but hear me out as everything else. Um, disagreements are always welcome down in the comments. Um, I was talking with a, a close personal friend, um, and she knows what I, what I do about narcissism. Uh, she knows I do this channel, and so she, she asked me some questions this morning, and uh, as usual I had a epiphany and so I want to put this out on the internet because that's what I do and that is this uh, in explaining the traits of narcissism and how to identify that those core traits uh, I realized something and and that is um, everybody including me and including you um, have a side of you that's narcissistic uh, every one of us has a, a side that is a narcissist. Uh, and I'm going to get into that. Now, I'm not saying we're all bad people. I'm not saying we're all monsters. not saying that we're all abusive. Because that's the, the, that's the disorder. That's whenever it gets to the point where it's um, comorbid with, with, with other uh, disorders. Uh, but I'm going to get into it. So, so uh, please listen closely to what I'm saying because I, I think this is relevant. Because this is one of what I call one of the handles that we walk around with uh, exposed for other people to grab us by this handle and, and jerk us around. Uh, this is not a, a clinical depth, uh, clinical psychology term, but we all have handles that, that kind of sort of stick out of us psychologically. Uh, sometimes, you know, people can hook our attention. You know, we, we get our, our attention just, just dominated by stuff. We have people that are just able to trigger us and, and uh, all these different uh, visceral pursuits, visceral direction changes, right? And, when, and that's when something grabs us by one of these handles. Well, there's a narcissistic handle that we have. And if you don't believe me, do this exercise. Uh, take a sheet of paper. It's a, it's, a, it's a common exercise. I think we've all done this once in our life. You take a sheet of paper, split it down the middle, and on the left side or, or on one side, you write all of the, your good traits, and on the right side, you write all of your bad traits. Well, all those good traits you have, that is what I, for lack of a better term, your narcissistic fingerprint. And I'm choosing my words carefully there. So narcissistic, you're not a narcissist, but these are your traits that are cast as narcissistic. And fingerprint, because there's always like a unique uh, combination of them with, with everybody, right? So, so what do I mean? Say, well, I'm a good father. Uh, I'm a good hard worker. I'm a good software developer i'm a good doctor i'm a good cashier um i'm a good stripper you know <laughs> whatever it is you think you're good at i'm i'm a good ladies man i'm good in the bed i'm a good drinker i've got a high tolerance right you know i can handle my alcohol Wh whatever those things that, that you feel are are good about yourself that is what I'm calling a narcissistic fingerprint. And now understand, again, these are not clinical psychology terms. You're not going to be able to go Google this and find a textbook. It's all subjective, and it's all open to disagreement. And I would certainly welcome that in, in the comments. Um, because my point is in, in this video is not to teach something that's academic or that you can find in a textbook. It's something to be self-aware of. These are the things you need to be self-aware of. Okay, so what are these things? I'm a good father, right? I'm a good parent, I'm a good father, I'm a good mother, I'm a good Christian, I'm a good person. And whenever, whenever all of any of those identities uh, come under attack, what do you do? You vehemently defend it. You say, it's like, it's like, I am a good father. No, I'm not abusive. I'm not a, an asshole, you know? No, I don't have a drinking problem. No, I don't have a gambling problem. No, I, I'm not a Satanist, okay? I'm a Christian. You know, uh, I'm pro-life. I'm not a bad person. I'm pro-choice. I'm not a bad person, right? The, so that left column is your narcissistic fingerprint. And I call it this because whenever, whenever those traits of us uh, all come under attack, we find ourselves uh, employing some of the same tactics that, um, that the, the greater narcissists, the people who are disordered, um, we find ourselves using, um, you know, fluffier, friendlier versions of, of those same things, right? 
Like, if, especially if they repeatedly come under contact, right? If somebody's repeatedly attacking um, your good traits, your, your positive self-image, right? Um, then you, what do you do? You start to project on, onto them. You start putting it back on them. Right, somebody who's constantly, if you're like athletic, for example, or you like to work out, you know, you think you've got a pretty good body, you're like proud of your body, um, and somebody comes up and it's like, yeah, well, you know, you're obviously skipping leg day, you know, or, you know, it's like, well, you still have a ways to go, um, you know, or, or it's like, well, I'm, I think you're on the right track. Uh, stuff like that. And it's like, what do you mean I'm on the right track? I've been there. I, I, ran the track forever i am the track you know that that type of stuff um what do we do we, we defend ourselves why because these are the things we think we're good at or we feel we're good at we identify as being good at they, these are my good things i mean this, this is what i got this is what i'm bringing to the table this is what i contribute to the world right so anytime um those traits of ours come under attack we defend um and there are people who sort of already do you know know to attack these things right when somebody is really pissed off and you're like i really just want to hurt this person they started attacking uh that image well uh it, on the disorder side it, it descends down from there and god knows i've done shit tons of videos on narcissistic disorders um so i'm going to try and keep off of that for now because i, I want to talk about us i want to talk about you i want to talk about me um those of us who identify ourselves as neurotypical, non-narcissistic, monstrous pieces of shit. Um, you know, this is why we, we still get triggered. Uh, especially triggering, I think, is something that uh, uh, hits that, that column to the left. Um, because the harder, you, the more effort you've put into that left column, the, the good column, uh, the, the more hard work you've put into it, the more... Uh, meaning, personal meaning you derive from those things, uh, the more likely it is to trigger you. Or if somebody just repeatedly, just habitual button pusher, just tap, 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 tap. You, you, we all remember as kids when you start tapping somebody on the shoulder, right? When, when you just want to fuck with another kid and we do this as kids, tap them on the shoulder, hey, nothing. Or you tap them on the wrong shoulder. And uh, there's always the kids who's like, hey, Hey, because you just start ignoring them. And so what do they do? They step it up. They're like, hey, 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 hey. What? Why are you yelling at me? See what I mean? Right? Um, the, more, the more they attack you on something, the more likely it is to trigger you, especially if it's day and day, day and day out, right? As a school kid, every day you go to school. And there's that other kid, hey, hey, hey. And there they go starting their shit again, right? Uh, and then they'll do it and they're like, hey. And you're like, what? And, uh, and, and then, then the teacher's like, dude, what, what, what's wrong with you? And what do they do? They, they pretend they're like, I, I don't know. I was just going to ask him a question. All I did was just tap him on the shoulder and he turned around and he like freaked out and screamed at me. I don't know why he's scary. He's unstable. See what I mean? Um. So we all have this narcissistic fingerprint. Now, why do I keep using the term narcissistic? And it's because at the at the heart of it, I think it's a, it's a, it's a, it's actually a very adequate, correct word to use um, because we're not talking about narcissism, and I'm not calling you a narcissist. Okay, narcissistic. It's a description. Okay, it's not defining who you are, and you're not a monster, and you're not a narcissist, and you're not one of these psychos that that, that walk around. No. All narcissism is, is is like these are your positive self image, it, your positive self image, uh, the things you work hard for, the things that define you and what you're bringing to the table uh, in this world. Okay, and and that's all part of you know the the healthy concept of the ego. This is me, you know, right? This is me. This is who I am. Um, it is your narcissistic fingerprint. Okay, and whenever, whenever anybody calls those things into question, what do you do? You, 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 you fall into the dichotomy of saying, no, I'm right, or saying, you're wrong, or, or both at the same time. No, you're a bad father. No, I'm not. I'm a good father. You're, you're a bad father. I'm not a bad father. You are. 
you're the one you're always doing all the blah 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 right so what do you do you, you start providing all the counterpoints and, and and presenting all the evidence to the imaginary jury and judge uh about this other person who's attacking you at your core i feel attacked by you that's a new one i heard right um so it's it's definitely worth considering uh, we all have um, a narcissistic fingerprint that we enter the world with and you know uh, unless you have whenever the, the the lower your self-esteem because we've all been to low points in our lives right we've all been hurt really deep you know the 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 when you get really hurt at at the, at your core, what do you do? You you draw upon the this column of good traits, and you say, "I'm going to be the better person. I'm going to take the high road," you know, or you, or you bury yourself in work. You bury yourself into your parenting, you know, or you really need your children now more than ever, so you snuggle with them a lot more, and you rely on your children for emotional supply to help recover from this injury. And the path to becoming a narcissist then is um, when you just get, got beaten down so much that you're constantly drawing on the, this column to the left to help you feel better. Wow, you know? Uh, and some of the people who make routine habit of doing this to people, they already know the drill. This is how you can question your own sanity sometimes. And you're like, well, I don't know. Am I a narcissist? Maybe I'm the one who's crazy because I certainly feel crazy. Right? It's called crazy making. They make you crazy. Um, so, yeah. I mean, there, there you have it. Um, I don't want to say we, all, we like to think we're so perfect because God, we've all heard that from somebody who's disordered. But, but this means to... A certain there, there's a, a certain um, flavor of high functioning narcissist uh, in in all of us. I say flavor is just like um, it's like lighting a, like a, a stick of of narcissist incense, you know. Where it's narcissist ick ish, narcissist ish. There you go. We have this narcissistish uh, side of ourselves where we think we're, we're good people and we want to go out into the world and we want to do good and, and, and make good things around in the world unless some dumb motherfucker comes around and attacks us on that and then we're like, no, you're wrong. Screw you, I'm a good person. You know, and the more pain and, and the more beat down you get and the more you draw on that, well, then uh, the closer we get. But the the there's a point you reach where you no longer care how people feel because you're just trying to make it through, right? Life beats you down so hard that you cling tightly to these to this good column and you never let it go. Um, and this is also one reason why arguing with a, a narcissist, like a, a full-on legit disordered narcissist, always goes around in circles because they always come back and they attack you on your good column. And so what do you do? It goes right back. A narcissistic circular argument is two people simultaneously attacking each other on what they write in that good column. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, or share, and I'll see you on the next video.